Uh, this is the last one before dinner, so I promise I'm going to make it short. I don't have 150 slides. And hi, my name is Ricardo. I, wow, my name is Ricardo. I work for the Chrome OS kernel camera team. That's a very long name uh, for a team that is doing something very simple, which is trying to make uh, our cameras enabled in Chrome OS. So in the pandemic, you can work from home. Uh, your kids can go to school uh, from home and, and all that annoying stuff. And yeah, but I'm very happy to finally show you what we have been doing in, in my team in, in terms of platform for the last more or less year. Uh, it's not my job, it's the job of my team. Uh, if there's anything good that I'm presenting today, it's probably because they have done it. The things that are not that good, that, that's my, my contribution. So yeah, let's start. Once upon a time. So, uh, me, right? I do drivers. That's what I like doing when I enable hardware. This is, this, is what, this is how I think the kernel looks or how the kernel should look like, right? You have a program, you have a program which is in user space that speaks uh, to a framework. And that framework speaks to a driver and that driver finally talks to the hardware. And it, it's simple. In, in this abstraction works, right? Uh, when you are programming, uh, when the programmer from Tux Razor doesn't need to know how to access the different controllers. He doesn't care if he has to use a, a Super Nintendo mouse or an Xbox. He just talks to the joystick interface, and the joystick interface is going to say, yeah, move the penguin to the left, move the penguin to the right. Everything else is white for them, and it's also super nice for drivers developers, because you don't care about who is above you. You don't need to implement the Tux Racer protocol. You just implement the joystick interface, and you're good to go. Every single application is going to work. Right. Uh, so why we are here? I mean, why don't we just use this for cameras? Well, because cameras are special, right? Uh, why they are special? First of all, because, and very simple, is because we have great diversity of output. So when you, uh, when you get a frame from a camera, you get a set of you get up some bytes and those bytes are formatted in different ways. They can be a red, green, blue. They can be a grayscale image. It can be a JPEG image. Whatever. Uh, if you just go into the kernel and search how many formats we support today, we have 202. So what does it mean? That doesn't mean that my Tux Racer needs to support 202 uh, frames. Or another way to do it is like, hey, let's make the kernel convert all these frames into something different uh, that, that a single format let's say that red green blue is the golden standard and let's convert all those frames into red green blue but yay this is not keys this is frames frames are huge i mean how are you going to do that in kernel without uh, killing your performance and then there's another way to do it which is hey let the hardware do it why don't we get a camera that supports 202 uh, formats well, maybe the manufacturers, they are not going to be very happy or they are going to charge you a lot for a, for a camera. And then there's another problem. So it's, like, it's not that we produce many different types of frames. It's that there's many ways of doing exactly the same thing. So when you look at your phone, you, you take your newest phone and it has a 64 megapixel uh, chip, uh, but you want to stream it on a, a, a 3G network. You cannot stream 64G uh, megapixels, you need a smaller frame. But what does a smaller frame mean? A smaller frames mean that I'm cutting the image, a smaller frames mean that I'm reducing the image, a smaller frames mean that for every second pixel I'm taking one pixel out of two, I'm one taking a pixel out of seven. So yeah, all those things are going to give you a smaller image. But it's not the same image, the field of view is completely different. Maybe if, if you take a 640 times 480, you're only looking at uh, the, the the point of your nose, of your nose. But you want to sell the whole, you want to send the whole frame. And, and the same happens with a dark image. So when you have a dark image, how do you uh, how do you make it brighter? Well, you can increase the exposure, or you can increase the uh, the gain. There are other ways, but yeah, uh, all of them produce a brighter image, but they are different. They are not the same image. If you increase the exposure time, if there's something moving, it will be blurred. If you increase the gain, uh, the noise will be increased as you increase the, the gain. 
And this becomes more and more important when we start to have hardware like, like this one, which is not particularly new. This is the OMAP chip, which is part of the N900, if I'm not, uh, if I didn't screw up searching for the, for the package. And it has all these complex sub-devices that connect one to each other, and you can modify them independently. So yeah, many different ways of doing the same thing. And the next thing is that, sorry, is that uh, the frames, the data, has a meaning now. You don't care about a frame that happened 60 milliseconds ago. You need to synchronize the audio, you need to synchronize the video. And these frames are huge. And when I'm talking huge, it's huge. Uh, just a 1080p image, we are talking about half a gigabyte of uh, uh, this gigabytes is high, so it's it's a lot of data, right? And so when you have a mobile phone, when you have a, a notebook, you don't want to process those images. You don't want those images in memory. You don't want to mingle with those data in uh, in user space. You just want to get wow. It's, it's that violent when you move the frames. You need to move frames to a uh, to other devices. So, for example, you will move it to a GPU, you will move it to a TPU, so it will replace your favorite lawyer with a cat, or uh, you will stream it uh, to a codec. So, yeah, many things. And finally, this is the third presentation uh, counting the uh, Canon recipes that we were talking about cameras. Why? Well, it's because cameras are driving the consumer market today. There's a, if you want to buy a mobile phone, there's a better chance that you will pay more money for a better camera than for a better CPU. And you see that you see that things when you are uh, looking at ads. When you want to compare phones, one of the first things they are going to talk about is how is the camera. And yeah, so it's driving the consumer market. And, and it's for a reason. It's not just because kids want to take selfies. It's not only because of that. It's because it's also useful for work from home. It's work from anywhere. Uh, e-learning so yeah cameras cameras are important and how do we handle cameras today okay this is the th third time we are talking that I'm going to make a small introduction of video for Linux so you can people that has gone to uh, embedded recipes they can sleep the moment I say kernel recipes you can wake up okay okay and I say kernel recipes you can wake up so video for Linux for those that weren't that are not asleep. So video for Linux is the way we access to the cameras. Uh, it was designed, it was merged 20 years ago, uh, and it was for hardware that more or less looked like this. So it's a more or less simple hardware that you get frames from it, and those frames are useful. So those frames are usually, they have uh, good, it's something you can use uh, it's not something that uh, you need to uh, post-process or something. Uh, the way we handle it in the kernel, how it does it work, is that we have around 110, if I'm not wrong, uh, callbacks uh, that uh, we need to implement. And what those each callbacks do, they callback are called when user wants to change the resolution, when the user wants to change the, uh, the gain. Uh, yeah, and there's a lot of them. And we can group them into three different groups. Uh, video buffer two, that handles buffers, that is doing the buffer abstraction. Controls, which is trying to abstract how do we uh, modify the gain, how do we modify the exposure uh, in a standard way. Uh, spoiler alert, it's not a standard. Uh, and video helpers, so video helpers is how do we change the FPS, how do we change all those kind of things. But I already spoiled a little bit before that now hardware looks more or less like this. It's not simple anymore. How did we solve that in Video for Linux? Well, we moved the model that I showed you before to each one of the components. So each one of the components is a sub-device, which again has to implement 110 uh, 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 callbacks. And on top of that, we have the media controller which allows us to interconnect all the uh, uh, all the different devices and, and do something with them. But um, you cannot just uh, use uh, a camera. You need to know something about the camera. Uh, it's not as simple as before, where you connect a device and you get a useful frame. Before you can con before you can get a useful frame, 
you need to go through a lot of stages, you need to configure the hardware, uh, and finally you have to do a lot of tuning. And what do I mean? And this is where Leap Camera is a great aid. And uh, there's a great presentation by Logan who made uh, yesterday uh, in Embedded Recipes. And yeah, uh, what is doing Leap Camera? Well, Leap Camera is just taking care of all this interconnect. It's, it's abstracting us again from the hardware, so we have a common API here. And the two blocks that we care more about are the pipeline handler, which takes care of how do we interconnect the other devices, how we configure them. And then there's another block, which is called the image processing algorithms, which uh, usually is proprietary. And, and the technical word for it is secret source. So what is the secret source? The secret source is what? Let's, let's uh, make, the cam make the images useful. So basically what I want to tell you is that for many years you have been living a lie, right? So when you take a photo from, when you see a, when you take a photo with your mobile phone or with your notebook or whatever uh, to a target image like this, you're happy because it looks exactly how the target looks like. But it is not. This is how it looks like from the sensor. So this is what we get from the sensor. And this is a real image. It is not that I took that image and screwed it up. No, no, this is what we get from the sensor. Normal programmer, I mean, anybody from this room uh, will be more likely capable of going into something like that. This is the previous image with some basic gain uh, and uh, white balance. But again, this is very different from this. Uh, you don't like the selfies taken this way, right? Uh, in order to get to something like this, we need to do a lot of post-processing. And this post-processing, how does it work? Well, we get uh, some statistics from the sensor. Those, those statistics come in a proprietary format. Uh, they go into a block, usually a block uh, from a vendor, which doing some magic with those values. And in return, it is coming with some configuration uh, in a proprietary format that we pass back to the to the sensor. And after that, we get a frame that looks like this. And yeah, it matches more or less what we see with, with our eye. So, recap. Um, Video for Linux 2, that was the first iteration of uh, with simple cameras. We have some hardware with a small kernel, more or less simple, with an agnostic user space. So your applications uh, can, uh, without knowing how the hardware works, they can read images, more or less like in the first example with the tax tracer. And with the media controller, we have a more complicated hardware with a much, much more complicated user space. They need to be aware of the cameras. And yeah, uh, now, kernel cam. And this is what we came to uh, introduce into the kernel recipes. So you, can, you can wake up. <laughs> so yeah, welcome again. Um, what is KCAM? So KCAM is how uh, we want to uh, use these complex cameras. Kernel CAM is a new kernel subsystem which doesn't have any media abstraction. Uh, the main topic or the main thing for kernel CAM is allowing a very easy communication between user space and other subsystems. Uh, kernel CAM is extremely simple, it's super thin. We move all the complexity to user space, and it's so simple that we only have two abstractions, or two components, entities and operations. What is an entity? Well, entity, it map, it, it's mapping really well to a hardware module. Uh, if you think of terms of a device tree, it will be a node on your device tree. Uh, and most of the times it's mapping one to one uh, with the device tree. Each one of these entities have a, a register set, meaning we can read and write from them, and what we can read and write is application specific. And each one of them, they can throw an event. So what is an event? So uh, if you talk about a sensor, maybe the sensor has finished uh, exposing the image, 
maybe the sensor has uh, triggered the flash, maybe there is a potato that is too green and uh, you want to notify the rest of the systems. So an event can be anything. It's asynchronous and it's provided by a single entity. And the second abstraction or the second, yeah, sorry. And if we compare this to the old uh, media controller, in media controller the entities, they don't represent hardware. They represent where the data is being converted, where the data is being transferred. It represents data flows. Here, these arrows doesn't represent data flows. They only represent how they are connected. How can we reach the different entities? Is through the USB controller? Is uh, through an IMMU? It's basically the device tree. And yeah, the second uh, entity, the second abstraction that we have is the operations. And what is an operation? An operation is a read or a write that we do, a read and or a write that we do to an entity. Uh, think of that as when we write into a sensor to uh, increase the, the gain, we write into the sensor to uh, increase the exposure time, or we send a huge parameter buffer to an ISP. Uh, entities depends on three things, or can depend with three things. Events, again, it's a hardware event, as, as, as we were describing before. They can depend on other operations, or they can depend on fences. So what are fences? A DMA fences is something that you can pass between different kernel subsystems and also user space to tell you that something has completed. A very typical example is when you are taking frames from a camera and you want to both give it uh, to a codec and you want to show it in your screen. So in that way, what you will be doing is you will pass a fence to these two subsystems and when the, uh, the operation has completed, you execute the fence or you start the fence. And every single operation, they can create a fence. The best way to think of an operation is think of a recipe. So for example, you are making a paella. When you have a paella, you have many things that you need to do in order to complete a paella. Some of these things, they depend on the previous thing. So first you need to fry the chicken, then you need to put whatever. And they have an order. You can do some of those things in parallel. So for example, while you are uh, frying the chicken, you can uh, grate the tomato, but you need to wait for the chicken to be fried before you can add the water. So this is the same. We have operations with dependencies. Depend things can be done in parallel. And yeah, that, that's the mental model. And by the way, this is an amazing calculator for how to do your paella. It always works. If there is something that you need to remember for this presentation, is this link. Uh, your friends are going to love you. And yeah, um, if we zoom out a little bit, this is more, this is all that I'm talking about. So the user through an IOCTL, this will be soon changed to an IO ring, uh, is passing operations. Is sending operations to the operation list with, for example, things like configure the sensor, trigger the image, init ISP, whatever. And this operation list is executing those operations as soon as there's no dependency that is uh, stopping one of the operations. Uh, we get uh, signals from the hardware, and when the, we get fences going into the system, so that's the way we can communicate with other subsystems, and we can communicate with them in a very granular way. We don't, we don't have to wait until we have a frame before we can tell another subsystem that this works. We can uh, tell uh, another subsystem, for example, when the frame has been taken. And at the end of the day, we send, we can create another fence. We can trigger a fence because that operation has been completed. Or we can tell the rest of this, we can tell user space, hey, this operation has worked or this operation has failed or whatever. Uh, I, we don't have time to go through the whole code. Uh, there will be a link at the end, but I guess this is the most. This is the core, or this is the. This will be the. This is the main uh, IOCTL that you will execute uh, uh, towards our uh, infrastructure, uh, our framework, uh, which is cam operation add. This is how you add an operation. First, you tell which entity you want to work with. Let's say the sensor. Let's say the DMA engine. Let's say whatever. Then you say the read write list, just provide a, a link to the uh, read and write operations that you want to write. Um, and then uh, 
you give it an ID. This is operation 32. This is operation 37. The user provides the ID because remember that the user is going to tell how the operations are linked. And then you provide the dependencies. You can depend up to eight different things. So these are dependencies. And as I said, this is all the things we can depend on. You can depend on nothing, a boring dependency. Uh, you can depend on another operation. You can depend on an event. Or you can depend on a fence. And uh, the, kind, the type of dependencies can be two types. We can be in a strict order, meaning I want, I want to depend these three things, and these three things have to happen in order. Or they can be a weak uh, order, meaning these three things have to happen at any point in any order, and then uh, we, we execute the operation. And yeah, and as a result, we can uh, have a fence up. This is something that the kernel will provide to us. This is a, every, all these are read only, this is write only. It depends what you read. I mean. You know what I mean. Um, testing. So this is one of the cornerstones or one of the keystones of our development. Uh, this is a prototype, uh, and we want to change things very fast. And the only way that you can change very fast is you add a lot of tests. And all our code is uh, making a very good use of KUnit. Uh, we have a lot of error injections because hardware fails, and we need to simulate when these errors happen. We have created our own virtual camera. This is VCAM, uh, which yeah, it, if people don't have the hardware, uh, you can just use VCAM and start playing around with uh, uh, with kernel cam. And we have, a, we have a very simple user space library that uh, can exercise uh, 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 LeCAM. Can exercise, sorry, uh, the CAM framework. Uh, luckily, uh, as I said, I work for Chrome OS. Uh, in Chrome OS, we take super seriously how do we test hardware. And we have farms like this full of notebooks that are distributed around the world with every single Chromebook model. Uh, and every time we make a commit, it's executed, it's tested on, on these things. So we make sure we don't uh, decrease the performance. So we are doing a lot of integration at unit testing. And also before we distribute anything to our clients, our customers, to you, to your mom, uh, there's, a, there's a team of uh, engineering tests that are verifying that, that this works. And we didn't, uh, yeah, we didn't destroy their notebook. So um, a very simple comparison. This is where we are coming from. This is what we are proposing. Um, in Today, in the kernel, we are in a world, we're in a situation where we cannot access anymore the hardware. We cannot abstract, we cannot access the hardware anymore without a lot of help from user space. What we are proposing is going, uh, making the full step into that direction and is moving all that dependency into, into user space. And kernel, of course, is still going to uh, protect that you don't do anything stupid. It's going to uh, make sure that power uh, is power efficient, uh, it's safe, uh, but all the media abstractions they are going to be in uh, they are going to be in kernel. And why? Because with this abstraction, with this way of development, we don't have we don't put any limits on what the hardware can do. So just to give you stupid examples, which are real, uh, in um, NVIDIA for Linux, the frames need to be in a square. And there's nothing you can do for a frame to stop being a square. Uh, why? We have applications where uh, frames that will look in a different uh, shape will make much more sense. We don't have to waste all this space. Uh, in NVIDIA for Linux, there's a there's only a specific set of ways of how you can set your frame rate. In KCAM, uh, you can have uh, uh, frame rates that moves, uh, that, are, are keep, uh, that are dynamic. So you can take photo, 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 and you can wait five hours and take photo, 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 based on, for example, a hardware, uh, uh, a hardware event. And those photo, 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 they don't have to have the same FPS. They can have a different FPS, each of them. Uh, we want to have very small drivers that we can upstream very easily. And at the end of the day, we want to move from streams to operations. 
operations is what we think should be what uh, developers should take care instead of uh, streams. Um, one very important thing of uh, kernel camp is governance. Uh, we don't want this to be uh, the Trojan horse where vendors are going to uh, leave their seat and run. And yeah, <laughs> that, I guess that was the censorship. Uh, they want to, uh, they just want to leave their code and run. Uh, we want exactly the opposite. We want to give an opportunity to drivers that cannot be mapped using the current video for Linux. Uh, they want, we want to give them a way to access uh, yeah. hardware that is not supported by for Linux can be supported with our platform. And the way we want to do this is following exactly the same model as the DRM, meaning that if there is no user space uh, uh, stack that supports that particular driver, that driver shouldn't be in kernel cam and will not be in kernel cam. And the way we are going to do this is providing standards. This standard will evolve in time. So today, what we consider a viable uh, camera is a camera that lets you take frames and let you do video conference and can have, uh, for example, can you change the exposure in every frame? And as the standard, as the industry evolves, we will evolve that standard. So, for example, if you want to, if in the future it's super important to replace lawyers with cats, we will put that into the standard. And yeah, that will be not only tested by humans, but also be tested with compliant tests. Uh, with uh, it will be tested with software. So, if you can run this test, that means that your application is not a, it's not compliance. Yep. So, future. So. Chrome OS, uh, it's a super nice operating system. It's basically Linux. It's a distro of Linux. Uh, and if you look into cameras, uh, we have to support three different applications or three different worlds. One is the camera, Android camera hub. Uh, in Chrome OS, you can run Android applications. You can you have a store and you can download whatever and, and use it. Uh, and we need to support it. We also need to support Chrome, the browser and we need to support virtual machines. And in order to support these three things, we have a camera service. Uh, we have an abstraction layer that provides service to these three on top of the uh, kernel stack, the current kernel stack. We are moving from this to something uh, that uh, has lib camera here. So the camera service is just a wrapper of lib camera. Or you can say it will sit here. And we want to move into from that uh, stack into this stack, where we basically replace the camera service with libcam, lib camera cam, uh, which is the camera using cam, the cam and cam drivers. And yeah, uh, the good thing is that we will be able to compare the three different stacks. So this, the one in the middle, and this one. We will be able to measure the performance. We will be able to make sure that the code doesn't look horrible. We will make sure that it's compatible with the future. And uh, yeah, um, if we are lucky, we will deploy it without uh, users using, uh, knowing it. And this is what we have been, this is something Chrome OS have been doing. Chrome OS, we, uh, sometimes when vendors provide us some downstream drivers, uh, if at the moment that we need to release the hardware, uh, that's the only thing we have. We enable those hardware and we release it. And once, and then we invest money and resources uh, to upstream those drivers. And when those drivers are upstream, we replace the downstream driver with the upstream driver without the user noticing and getting no complaints and no reports from the user. That that's the highest measurement of success that that we have in in our team. And yeah, uh, of course, uh, Chrome OS upstream first. Uh, we don't want to have a new uh, standard. We want to get this upstream. The only reason, the only way that to this to move forward is if we can uh, get some consensus. And this is why we are here. This is why we want to show it as soon as possible, even if it's uh, very limited right now. Uh, we want to hear your feedback. We want to. We are part of the community, and I don't think anybody working in my team has a bad history of of working working upstream. So the main, our main focus is that this, uh, at some point, will land upstream. 
it's a nice experiment. We want to do it, and we want to uh, the rest of the uh, community to to also use it. So, if you want to contribute, it's, it's very easy. You you can see the code there. Uh, we we just dump it from the private repo to to the public repo. We have a mailing list that you can use. We we don't have a backsilla. Uh, it's a work in progress. It's it's there, but the legal team has to approve it. it takes a while. Uh, and of course, if this is something that you like or this is something that is uh, exciting to you, please uh, send me a link, uh, send me an email. We, we are hiring and, and we would like your help. This is a huge task and we need as much hands as we can. So, uh, with this, it concludes my slides. Thank you very much. And yeah, any questions? Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah. So just to make sure that I understood um, the proposal correctly, so these operations um, would that typically carry like a list of, for example, for a sensor, let's say for an aspect C based sensor, like typical mm -hmm. thing, would that typically carry like a list of um, address and register value uh, to configure the sensor? So that would be submitted from user space directly to the kernel. Okay. Exactly. All right. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm a bit surprised because I feel like in V4L2 we already have like such a big problem with sensor drivers, with, where we have those huge tables of you know prefilled uh, mm -hmm. address and register values that don't have any definitions that are like zero percent uh, flexible. And so it, to me, it kind of feels like this won't really help uh, in that sense. Um, yeah. Uh, so basically, everything would need to be in user space. And uh, okay, do, so, do you plan on on um, like having a collection of user space sensor drivers uh, for that, or how would it work? Like, is it I, something you want to keep part of your secret sauce? Or? No, 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 no. Of course not. And as I said, if there's a camera that has a driver that wants to land in KCAM, there needs to be a complete open source solution. Uh, okay. So that means that uh, yeah, we will have a. There has to be a complete user. Uh, the, the natural place to put that code is in Lib Camera, uh, and yeah. So ideally, there will be a Lib Camera implementation uh, that supports that, that device. Uh, and yes, you, you're right. I mean, I would love that vendors provide all the documentation, but uh, we it doesn't seem like we have been able to do that. And it's the same problem that the DRM team is having. You, we don't have documentation for every single registers for GPUs. So I think we are just trying to show our reality, which is that instead of having these huge blobs of registers in kernel space, they belong to user space. Because they are horrible blobs, we don't know what they do, and we want to, yeah. Okay, thank you. And a second question, if I may. Um, you So you made a comparison with the current media controller API and all, and I think there's an aspect that I didn't see, or maybe it's just me, but uh, that's the root routing part, mm -hmm. where you can have like, um, maxes or anything that have like multiple inputs, multiple outputs. Um, is this something that you plan on supporting typically with this operation as well? Like you yeah. would just set registers uh, to exactly. configure that? Okay. okay. So then it would be fully like user space based. Yes. Okay. Uh, Thank because you. there's things we cannot map. So there's some operations, there's some routers that you want to take uh, every three frames. You want to do one thing with one frame, one thing with every second frame, and two things with every third and fourth frames. And that's something we cannot m map today with uh, media controller. And, and yeah, uh, vendors wants, uh, vendors don't want to wait 10 years to get their, these features landed in the kernel because in 10 years that product is out of uh, is out of market. They want to land their, their code as soon as possible. And just maybe a final one. You mentioned that tree representation between the components. So that tree, Sorry, once again? You mentioned the tree representation in your API between the components. A tree, like the link yes. between the different components. Yes. So that would be like typically a static representation, and the routing would not like affect that or anything. Yes, the routing is not there. That is, it okay. represents the. How do you access that hardware? All right. Do Thank I get you. through the USB or IMMU or yeah? Thank you. Thank you. Logan. <laughs> Logan, my kids are watching. Sorry? My kids are watching the stream.
That's fine, that's fine. I, I, I won't kill anyone today. Uh, I, I can't promise tomorrow or tonight, but... Um, oh, uh, uh, a comment and one or two questions. The comment first, if you re redo this presentation in the future, it may be interesting to focus a bit more on the problems that you see in v 2 and media control that you would like to solve, because you focus a bit more here on, well, the new, uh, the new API, uh, mm -hmm. but the comparison and the things that you consider to be difficult to do, possibly, they would be, would be interesting to discuss. So the first question is, given that we're moving towards an API that does, that accesses registers directly from user space mostly, why do we need a kernel kind of subsystem? Let's do UIO and we don't. So there's, so in order to do the operations properly, I mean the, oper the, the operation arbitration is not uh, trivial. That's something you, you cannot do today with uh, uh, user space uh, drivers. Uh, and also if we would, the introduction of fences uh, yeah, that's, that is also there. We made fences in UIO in that case, yeah. yes. Fences in, fences out, and the arbitration of the different operation, that is something that is not trivial. And uh, it's something that every single hardware will have to uh, re-implement, and it makes more sense to, to, put, it, to put it this way. Uh, second question, how are you going to force vendors uh, to play along and actually create a user space implementation? How like Qualcomm, for instance. How are you going to force Qualcomm to come up and open a user space implementation that will include algorithms and access to the ISP and configuration of the sensors. So, Qualcomm, for example, yeah. today we have you have an open source implementation in uh, in Chrome OS. Uh, it will be as it's not maybe it's not the uh, most nicest to read that. Uh, it will be this will be exactly the same. Uh, ben, I mean, Qualcomm, we have been already contacting some vendors. Qualcomm is one of them. And, and, and they like the, the new design. Yeah. It, what, what, uh, at least as far as I can tell, what I've seen today is that they have a binary blob that creates at least of registers and addresses. Uh, so there's nothing that's open. Um, uh, yeah, uh, yes and no. Uh, the only part that is completely blob is the part that they are the, the secret source. Uh, but most of the part is, I believe the code is available. It's, it should be under platform camera uh, Qualcomm. Yeah. Can you do 3A without that close source power? No, 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 and yeah. that's something we don't want. I mean, uh, 3A, uh, is, is 3A, I, I don't think it's something we will be uh, able to uh, to make the vendors make free because that's the differentiator between buying one notebook and between buying one device or the other. So sure. the 3A is going to be as close as today. Maybe what we are going to force is for the vendors to give us a bad 3A or a, a, a 3A that is good enough to make a video, to make video conference. I don't think we'll be able to get them to do that. Okay. Um, I think this is going to be a regression, actually, compared to, to what we have today in terms of openness. I, I don't think. I mean, to, what we have today is not that open. If you look at the uh, media controller today, the uh, statistics, the, the statistics that come from the driver, and the uh, parameters that we pass back uh, to the ISP, they are also proprietary. Mm -hmm. They are not as, they are also closed source. Some vendors document them. If yeah. we go to that tomorrow, none of them will. Yeah, I don't think so. Uh, they won't bother, why would they? Um, yeah, because uh, for the same reason they will do it today. That is exactly the same scenario, but now we are going to be able to support more hardware that we support today. I think it's going to be less, at least in open implementations. I hope not, and this is, uh, I, I, I hope not. This is why we are doing it. Um, and yeah, if I knew that this will be uh, against open source, I will probably wouldn't be working on this. I mean, for sure I wouldn't be working on this. I, I, I'm sure you do this in good faith. <laughs> we agree. <laughs> um, you didn't talk about buffer handling. As I understood, uh, the ISP and mm -hmm. other components that would di write directly to memory via DMA would also be controlled via this register interface. So I wonder uh, how do you avoid malicious user space controlling those DMA-able uh, devices? So uh, when you send an operation to the when you send an op when you add an operation to uh, to the operation list, uh, those operations are validated. So you will make sure that it's not doing something stupid. You will make sure it's not uh, uh, breaking any barrier. Uh, we only aim to support the MA buff. We don't want to support anything else than that. Uh, yeah. 
that's the that's that's the abstraction we are working on. And if that's all your um, what is the license of uh, Lib Camera? Uh, what is the license of Lib Camera? LGPL. LGPL. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> so yeah, so all vendors need to comply to this license, right? Yes. Okay. And so I guess this model will also be helpful for other operating systems. Sorry. So you you mentioned uh, Android. Uh, I don't know the status of Android compared to Chrome OS, but uh, yes. I, I guess this uh, lib camera with well uh, embedded drivers could be useful for, let's say, a BSD system too, mm -hmm. because it's a way to share drivers, right? Yes. Um, maybe you can answer the question better than me on that one. Yeah. So in lib camera, we do have a compatibility with Android, so we definitely want uh, that's, a, that's a platform we want to support. Uh, Chrome OS actually uses the same uh, use space API as Android, uh, so that's that's why we have developed that, but uh, it targets the two operating systems, uh, and lib camera certainly aims with a single implementation on the back end uh, to support all kind of Linux systems. Um, so yes, there's a potential for code sharing there. Uh, I mentioned LGPL for the license, that's for the core, and uh, the, what we call the pipeline handler part of the uh, lib camera. When it comes to the three algorithms, they load it as a separate module, so they can be open and they can be closed source. So what else? So, uh, where would the sensor driver code Sorry? live? Where would the sensor driver code live with this? Would that be pushed to user space? Yes. So, there will be a trend. Um, it will be uh, so in this, of, we don't want to rewrite the drivers. So we want to access the current sensor drivers, but if I, there will also be CAM drivers and most of the implementation will be in user space. In kernel space, the only thing that we'll do basically is powers, uh, power management, uh, read and write the registers or break map, um, and validating that the registers, you're not doing anything illegal. So there's some sensors that uh, you can break them if you can, if you set a specific register, if you set a specific game. Uh, so you will do that validation. Okay, so the code will live in this lib kcap. Yes. Okay. So uh, won't it end up like the GPU blobs we suffer with now? Sorry? Uh, wouldn't this end up being like the GPU blobs we suffer with right now? Because then the vendors would just release blobs, possibly. No, but in they, they have, I mean, they, they are allowed to release a complete closed source with all their magical cuts. Uh, remove the lawyers by cut, but they also have to provide a complete open source implementation. Otherwise, the drivers are not coming in. Um, I don't understand why. I mean, they, they just provide you a user space library and say, well, okay, this is our driver and that's it. Yeah, right? but, uh, the, that driver will never be upstream. Well, you they will have the kernel part, which will likely be the same, right? Yeah, but that, that's, oh, yes, but uh, that, they can have a downstream kernel. That, that, is, that is the same problem is happening today. But then you can go, yes, vendors today they have, they can release you a downstream driver. Yeah, I don't get it. Well, yes, anyway, yes. thanks. I think the, uh, uh, yeah. Sorry, I know, but wait, I, I didn't know there was a competition of slides. And 